Well, this is the 2012 Level 3 Mechanics exam. We start off with a question on the rotation of motion. We've got a person sitting on a chair, a chair that rotates. Um, we've got the normal position and the legs out position. The normal position isn't meant to indicate right angles or anything, it's just a normal sitting position. I was sitting in a normal position, feet off the ground on a freely rotating swivel chair. In this position, the rotational inertia of Ira and the chair is uh, 5.45 kilogram meters squared. Ira pushes with the hands against the nearby table to make herself and the chair rotate at an angular speed of 7.50 radians per second. That's a build up. A. Calculate the number of rotations uh, that chair does in 5 seconds at a steady angular speed of 7.50 radians per second. Okay, so steady angular speed, how many in one rotation, because this is the number of rotations, one, uh, one rotation is equal to 2 pi, um, so we, uh, and uh, we've got a speed of 7.5 radians per second for 5 seconds, so we need to know first the total number of radians turned through, um, which is omega times t, omega being the 7.5, and uh, T being uh, 5, and that gives you a total number of 37.5. I'm cutting this just a little bit short for the sake of a quicker video, because it's more about the method than the, than the actual answer. So 37.5 radians, and then we divide that. Uh, this is a separate calculation, because you can't just add another calculation onto the end of all of that. So a separate calculation for the uh, number of rotations. So a number of rotations, we might just call it hash or n or whatever, equals 37.5 divided by 2 pi, and that's going to give us 5.97 rotations. So the units for this are rotations, numbers of rotations. Um, you could have used the uh, angular frequency, omega is 2 pi f, um, and since the frequency is going to be 7.5, because it's 7.5 per second, divided by um, 2 pi, it gives you the amount of rotations per second, and you just multiply that by 5. That's another way to do it. Anyway, moving on. B. It took 0.54 seconds to change the angular speed. So this is sounding like it might be a kinematic equations in a rotation version. So change the angular speed from 0 to 7.5, 0 radius per second. Calculate the average torque that I write. Okay. Whenever I see a question like this that's clearly linking a number of um, questions, I'm going to write the first or the final um, uh, uh, formula out. So when it's torque and it's accelerating, it's pretty obvious it's going to be the torque equals inertia times the angular acceleration. Torque equals I alpha. And I haven't written that very well. It looks like pi, but it's can really talk. Okay, I pressed something funny there, so hopefully, um, hopefully this carries on okay. Um, I'll check it before I post it. Um, now, what we're after is um, we know the change in speed and the amount of time. So um, remember, oh, I'm on the wrong. Let's go back. There we go. The, the ex change in or the acceleration, angular acceleration, is change in velocity over change in time. Change in velocity in this case is 0 minus 7.50, so we're, well, it's an increase. Final minus initial 7.50 minus 0, so 7.50 over the change in time, 0 0.54. That's going to give us this part. I believe further up we're given the rotational inertia. Yes, we are. There it is right there. Um, so we're just going to plug those numbers in and calculate out our final answer. Okay, our final answer is going to be um, 75. I'm just reading this off the marking schedule. 75.7, and the units for torque is in newton meters. Okay, C. Ira makes herself rotate in the legs out position and compares this with making herself rotate in the normal position. She finds that when her legs are out, she has to push against the table with a greater force. Uh, to get the chair spinning at the same angular speed in the same time. Discuss why this is so. So the big idea here is the inertia is changing. Inertia changes. So um, if the inertia is greater, okay, so if, if uh, going for our torque being proportional to the inertia, um, if 
the inertia for the same acceleration, because that's what we're looking at here. Um, because when it says to get the chair spinning at the same angular speed in the same time, this part here, same angular speed, that's talking about the same acceleration. So the same acceleration is being given. Um, so it means the torque being proportional to the inertia. The inertia changes and increases when her legs are further out. Mass distribution increases, so her inertia will increase. Therefore, the torque, um, therefore, torque must increase in order um, to do that. And torque is force times distance. Um, she's pushing herself with her arms to push uh, at the same distance. So torque, let's write that, force times distance. So the distance at which she's pushing does not change, so there's no change with that. That means it's just the force has to increase. We could write this in a full equation. Fd equals I and uh, is proportional to I, just not an equation, a proportionality statement. Um, and, the, and the distance isn't, oh, we could actually make it equals. Okay, so Fd equals I alpha. Um, D and alpha are not changing, so we'll scrap the equals and just go to a proportionality statement. And we can see from this that force is directly proportional to inertia. And inertia increases when mass is further from the center of rate, radius of rotation. That's what they're trying to get at, all that kind of stuff. Okay, moving on. D. Ira is sitting in the normal position.